happen. Yeah, that eruption proving spectacular and terrifying all at the same time. Scientists at Yellowstone National Park telling us this was a random event happening without warning. What if the Earth could send us a message? Not in language, not in writing, but in steam, in heat, in a sudden plume that rises from the ground where yesterday there was nothing. And what if that message came not from some remote desert or hidden volcanic island, but from Yellowstone National Park, one of the most studied and closely monitored volcanic systems on the planet? That is exactly what happened in the summer of 2024, when an ordinary stretch of land at Biscuit Basin suddenly changed. One morning, without warning, a brand new hydrothermal vent appeared, exhaling a column of steam hot enough to scorch the ground, wilt plants, and leave a dark scar across the meadow. No map marked it. No scientist predicted it. No tourist expected it. The Earth simply acted, and everyone else was left to wonder. What does it mean? Is it just a quirk of Yellowstone's endless geothermal display? A puff of pressure released harmlessly into the air? Or is it something more? Could this be a signal? A symptom? A whisper that the giant beneath the park is shifting again? And how do we tell the difference between something ordinary and something extraordinary? when the line is so thin. Beneath Yellowstone's serene forests and wide skies lies a vast, hidden engine. Rain and snow seep into cracks, traveling downward until the water meets heat, rising from an ancient magma reservoir. The water superheats, becomes pressurized, and forces its way back up to the surface through whatever pathways the rock will allow. Sometimes it erupts as a geyser. Sometimes it seeps out as a hot spring. And sometimes, seemingly out of nowhere, it breaks through as a brand new vent. So what does it mean when one of those new pathways suddenly opens, unannounced? At Biscuit Basin, the change was dramatic. Steam burst upward at 171 degrees Fahrenheit. The soil around the vent reached temperatures above 180, hot enough to warp the ground itself. Vegetation crumpled and blackened, as if the earth had been burned from below. Cracks spread outward, hissing with gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. And there it was, a feature that had not existed the day before, now reshaping the landscape in front of our eyes. But why here? Why now? And what does the birth of a vent like this tell us about the state of Yellowstone's hidden plumbing system? For scientists, these questions aren't just academic. Yellowstone's hydrothermal network is like a living organism, constantly rearranging itself. Waterways collapse, pressure shifts, new roots open, when something new appears, it suggests the system beneath is in motion. And when that system moves, scientists have to ask, is this a release that makes things safer or the start of pressure building towards something larger? Consider this. Monitoring equipment around the park picked up subtle but telling signals. Tiny earthquakes rattled the ground, too small for humans to notice but clearly visible on Yellowstone's seismic network. GPS stations measured centimeters of uplift, almost invisible to the eye but consistent with fluid movement beneath the crust. Do these changes point to something dangerous? Or are they the natural, everyday rumblings of a giant that has always been restless? The vent's persistence adds another layer to the mystery. If it were simply a brief release, it should have collapsed quickly, fading back into Yellowstone's background chorus of geysers and springs. But this vent didn't fade. It stayed. It kept steaming into the crisp Wyoming air, visible even from the highway. Weeks after it opened, months passed, and still it roared. Doesn't that persistence suggest something deeper is feeding it? For tourists driving through, the new vent became a spectacle. They pulled to the roadside, cameras clicking, children pointing, parents whispering their own theories. Some felt awe, some unease. After all, this wasn't old faithful, predictable and safe, performing like a well-rehearsed actor on schedule. This was unscripted, raw, the earth improvising in real time. Would you stand there and wonder? Or would you feel the urge to step back? Rangers wasted no time in rerouting trails and posting warning signs. Why? Because the crust around these features can be dangerously thin, sometimes no thicker than cardboard. Step off the boardwalk in the wrong place and you might plunge straight into boiling water. History has recorded tragedies of those who ignored the warnings. Do we ever really grasp how fragile the ground beneath our feet can be in Yellowstone? For indigenous peoples, though, the vent's arrival might have been seen through a different lens. Long before Yellowstone was designated a national park, tribes such as the Shoshone and Crow viewed these steaming landscapes as sacred. 
places where the Earth itself spoke. If the ground suddenly opened and exhaled steam, wouldn't that be interpreted as a message? An expression of balance, power, or warning? How often do we, in our scientific age, forget to ask what meanings others saw here, long before seismometers and thermal cameras? And speaking of cameras, scientists were quick to set theirs up. Thermal sensors mapped the heat signature of the vent. Gas analyzers sniffed for dangerous emissions. Seismic instruments logged every tiny tremor nearby. What did they find? A system alive with change, but not eruptive in nature. The conclusion, at least for now, is that this vent is part of a hydrothermal adjustment, a reactivation, not a prelude to catastrophe. But isn't it telling that even in the most monitored volcanic system in the world, the Earth can still surprise us overnight? History gives us reason to pay attention. In the mid-1980s, more than 3,000 earthquakes struck the park in just a few months, leaving scientists scrambling to understand what they meant. In 2003, Norris Geyser Basin grew so hot that parts of its boardwalk melted, forcing closures. And long before anyone was measuring with instruments, hydrothermal explosions tore open craters across the land. Mary Bay on Yellowstone Lake was created by one such explosion thousands of years ago, its violent force scattering rock for miles. Isn't it striking that the same system that gives us beauty can also produce devastation? So when a new vent appears, do we shrug and call it just another quirk? Or do we treat it as one more clue in a long line of signals that Yellowstone is never still? Outside Yellowstone, we can look to other landscapes for perspective. In Iceland, geysers erupt beside glaciers, drawing travelers from around the world. In Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, hydrothermal features dot a wild volcanic terrain few ever see. In New Zealand, steam pours from streets in Rotorua, integrated into daily life. Yet Yellowstone dwarfs them all. Its underground system is vaster, its magma reservoir larger, its potential for change greater. Does that mean every vent is more significant here than elsewhere? By late autumn, snow began to drift across the meadows. Still the vent exhaled, a silver plume rising into the cold air. If the Earth meant this to be just a fleeting breath, wouldn't it have stopped by now? Or is the persistence of this feature telling us that deeper forces are still at work, keeping the valve open? Perhaps the vent is Yellowstone's way of relieving pressure, a natural safety release. If that's true, should we be reassured that the system is self-correcting? Or perhaps it is a symptom of stress redistributing, the plumbing rearranging itself in ways we don't yet fully understand. Should that possibility unsettle us? The truth is, Yellowstone doesn't answer our questions directly. It leaves clues, whispers, hints. It acts in its own time, not ours. The vent at Biscuit Basin is not a catastrophic sign, but it is a reminder. A reminder that the ground beneath our feet is alive, restless, and capable of transformation at any moment. And so the question lingers. What exactly is the Earth trying to tell us this time? But what does persistence really mean in a place like Yellowstone? If a vent keeps steaming month after month, is it a harmless quirk of geology or a warning signal written in vapor? And how do we interpret something that has no timetable, no calendar, no obligation to reveal its purpose to us? Consider this, Yellowstone is not just a park, not just a collection of geysers and hot springs for tourists to marvel at. It is one of the most dynamic volcanic systems in the world. That system can rearrange itself suddenly, quietly, in ways that challenge even the best monitoring networks. And sometimes, it doesn't give us the answers we crave until years or decades later. What if this vent is one of those signals we will only understand in hindsight. Scientists are quick to stress that this isn't the start of a volcanic eruption. The magma reservoir beneath Yellowstone still sits far below, its energy bottled in ways that don't translate into immediate danger. But does not eruptive mean not dangerous? Not exactly. Because while a vent may not herald magma rising, it can still be part of something powerful, a hydrothermal explosion. What is a hydrothermal explosion? Imagine pressure building in a sealed pot, water superheated by rock-heated steam. Eventually, something gives. 
The release can be sudden, violent, and destructive. Yellowstone's history is dotted with them. Craters hundreds of feet wide, even miles across, scar its landscape. Silent evidence of blasts that happened without magma ever reaching the surface. The Mary Bay Crater in Yellowstone Lake is one such relic, born from a steam-driven explosion powerful enough to hurl rock and ash in all directions. Smaller events happen too, more localized, but still dangerous. Would anyone standing near this new vent, when pressure builds, be safe? The answer is sobering, not necessarily. And this raises the question, how many other signals of potential hydrothermal explosions have we ignored because they seemed too small at first? Could this vent be the beginning of such a buildup? Or is it simply a relief valve preventing one? Do we view it as a safety feature or as a threat? To answer those questions, scientists look not just at the vent itself, but at Yellowstone's broader behavior. Seismic swarms, clusters of hundreds of tiny earthquakes, frequently ripple through the park. Most are harmless, mere shuffles of rock beneath the surface. But every tremor tells us something about the stress and fluid moving below. Ground uplift has been recorded across Yellowstone's caldera many times. In some years, the land swells upwards several inches, then sinks again, as if the earth itself were breathing. Could this vent be connected to one of those cycles? Could it be a minor exhale in a long rhythm of inhaling and exhaling pressure? The hard part is knowing how to distinguish the ordinary from the extraordinary. If Yellowstone can still surprise scientists with vents no one saw coming, what does that say about our ability to forecast its next big move? With all our satellites, GPS stations, seismometers, and gas monitors, are we still at the mercy of a system far older and more complex than our models can capture? And then there's the question of time. On a human scale, Yellowstone looks calm. No major volcanic eruption has occurred in 70,000 years. The last truly massive eruption was 640,000 years ago, long before our species even wrote its first stories. But on a geologic timescale, Yellowstone is restless. Eruptions, lava flows, explosions, and hydrothermal rearrangements have shaped it again and again. Isn't it humbling to realize that we live in a brief pause between transformations? That what feels permanent to us is only temporary in the story of the Earth? So maybe the vent is a clue. Maybe it is a breadcrumb on a trail that stretches backward into Yellowstone's violent past and forward into an unknown future. Maybe, decades from now, scientists will look back at this event and see it not as a quirk, but as the opening line in a longer chapter. Could this be the start of a new hydrothermal field? Could it mark the beginning of a subtle reorganization of Yellowstone's underground plumbing that reshapes entire valleys over the next century? Or could it be nothing more than a local adjustment, destined to fade into obscurity like other vents before it? The possibilities multiply, and with them, the questions. How will climate change affect Yellowstone's hydrothermal activity? With less snowpack or with heavier rainfall, the amount of water feeding into the system shifts. Will drier years mean fewer geysers, fewer outbursts of steam? Or will wetter years load the system with so much water that pressure forces new vents into being? Could global warming change the very heartbeat of Yellowstone's geothermal system? And what about the human dimension? Yellowstone isn't an isolated volcanic island. It's a national park visited by millions of people every year. Roads, boardwalks, hotels, and power lines all sit atop this restless ground. What happens when new vents open near human infrastructure? What if one day a vent like the one at Biscuit Basin opened not in a meadow, but beneath a parking lot, or under Old Faithful's viewing platform, or beside the road to Yellowstone Lake? Would the park still feel safe to visit? Would it still feel like a sanctuary? Or would it feel like a reminder that we are guests on borrowed ground? And then, beyond Yellowstone, we can't help but compare. Iceland's geysers are powerful, but live in a land used to geothermal change. Kamchatka's Valley of Geysers in Russia is remote, dangerous, and rarely visited. New Zealand's Rotorua steams through city streets, woven into daily life. But Yellowstone is unique. 
It combines global-scale geothermal power with heavy human presence. Does that make every change here more significant, more symbolic than changes in those other places? Perhaps the most unnerving part is that no matter how advanced our technology becomes, Yellowstone still finds ways to outpace us. We can measure gas output to the part per million, track land movement to the millimeter, and detect earthquakes smaller than a whisper. And yet event can still appear overnight, unannounced, leaving us scrambling to explain. What does that say about the limits of human knowledge? Are we destined always to be interpreters, piecing together signals from a system that doesn't speak in straight lines, but in riddles of steam and stone? So what, ultimately, is Yellowstone telling us through this new vent? Is it caution that beneath the beauty lies a danger we must never take lightly? Is it humility that even here, with all our instruments, we are still students, not masters? Is it an invitation, an urging to look closer, to listen more carefully, to recognize that the earth is not static, but alive? Or is it warning that the calm we take for granted is only surface deep, and that deep below, forces we cannot control are still at play? If you were standing at roadside springs, watching that plume rise into the winter sky, how would you feel? Would you see wonder? A chance to witness the earth creating itself before your eyes? Or would you see unease? A reminder that everything we build, from roads to boardwalks to entire cities, rests on borrowed time. Would you feel both at once? Torn between awe and fear, the way Yellowstone always seems to make us feel? Because here's the truth, both reactions are valid, both are real. Yellowstone is a place where beauty and danger walk hand in hand, where the earth reveals its power not in words, but in whispers of steam and sudden rearrangements of land. The appearance of this new vent is not a catastrophe, not an eruption, not the end of the story, but it is a chapter, and chapters accumulate. And if you found this as fascinating as I did, if Yellowstone's living, breathing landscape sparks the same curiosity in you, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with someone who loves uncovering Earth's secrets, and subscribe for more deep dives into the mysteries shaping our planet. Because one thing is certain, Yellowstone is still talking, and the story of this new vent 